Welcome to movement analysis exam question practice. Today, obviously, we're going to be looking at how to answer questions on levers and some movement analysis questions. Today, we'll be aiming at GCSE students, so if you are an A level undergraduate student, please wait as there are more videos that will become more relevant to you at a later date. So, practice question one usually, exam boards have multiple choice questions and they are set majority at the beginning and middle of the exam in order to help get, give the students um, more confidence as they go through the exam. Um, please ensure that you are sticking to one mark per minute, okay? I tend to impress on students that you don't have to spend the entire minute on this question or a one mark question. However, you do need to ensure you read the question twice, okay? That is not a gimmick that teachers have been saying for hundreds of years because they love saying it. It's because Students may read the question once and may not understand it fully. So therefore, always you double check and make sure you've read the question and understood what it's asking of you. So this question here is which one of the following shows how to calculate the mechanical advantage of a lever? I've noted here in circled advantage because this could quite easily be a disadvantage. Okay, and we will cover that at a later A-level question. But for a GC right now, this is um, suitable. Put an X in the one box only. Some students have ticked, okay, before in the past, and this can easily quite lead to the student identifying the correct equation or letter, however, get not obtaining the mark because they've put a tick and not an X, they haven't followed the instructions correctly. Have a quick go at answering this question. Okay, so the answer is B, effort arm divided by weight or resistance arm. Okay, but why is that? Why, why is this important to me? Um, well, it matters because when you think about um, a mechanical advantage, the idea is to allow you to move a large load or a heavy weight with minimal force or effort. Okay, so make your life easier. So... The idea is if the F arm is greater than the weight arm, it doesn't need that much force in order to move it. So for example, a wheelbarrow or a rowing oar. So for rowers, they when they apply that force at the end of the row, and at the very end of that long bar that's in the water, that, that oar, the force that's going into the water from that paddle is a lot higher than what the athlete is putting into the actual rowing action itself. So this is why it's really important. Another question might be, state the four movements involved in circumduction. I've typically put this in because some of my students didn't quite understand the difference between circumduction and rotation. Quite understandably, it is quite a difficult concept to get your mind around, okay, and can be quite confusing. However, circumduction, okay, I tend to tell my students, remember the length of the word. It means it has to include more things than rotation, which is a shorter word, okay. It's a bit of a silly way of remembering it, but it works for some students and that's what's important. Okay, so circumduction includes four movements. Have a quick go at answering this question. Okay, for those of you who are very quick, okay, the four movements are very straightforward. They are flexion, extension, adduction, and abduction. And we'll see this in the mark scheme here. There they are. Okay, so the idea um, of circumduction is to create that circular movement. And it's here in this diagram here. You see that circular movement. So the arm itself is moving as if you've got a large wooden spoon in your soup and you're trying to rotate it, okay? However, rotation is that twisting action, okay? So if you put your arm out and twist it, all right, as if you've got a bam, uh, table tennis bat and you're going from the red to the dark side of forehand to backhand, okay? That's the twisting rotation movement that we're on about. They're the two differences between the two. Another question here is, the diagram shows a basketball player jump into an a shot. Draw the lever system which operates at the ankle joint in the space below. I've highlighted ankle joint here, okay, so because this is identifying the fulcrum to you. Label the fulcrum F mode. 
this is one mark question. If you do not label the fulcrum effort and load, you will not gain that mark. Okay, you can draw it accurately and professionally as you want, but if you don't label it, you will not get the mark because it's in the instruction there. Okay, this question here quite easily could be an example of a long jump or high jump upon execution on netball. Um, a band serve for the player goes into tiptoes in order to raise that lower bottom rib in order to make the serve legal for a backhand flick or tennis serve when they gone to their tiptoes as well. Doesn't matter. This the principle is the same as the second class lever at the uh, ankle tiptoe. What I try to impress on students well for to help them here is to highlight here and draw a box around the ankle because then you forget about the rest of the image because the rest of the image there is to try and put our students in, and they they see draw the the question that says draw the lever system which operates at the ankle joint for some students they're very excited and they don't don't remember that it's the ankle joint and they might look at the elbow instead because quite a few questions particularly in my last video looked at the elbow joint on the execution of a liner and rugby okay which examiners also love to put in so you need to ensure that you are focused on what the question is asking of you Okay, albeit this is not the same orientation, okay, as the pick diagram here, but the principle is still the same. It's still a second class uh, lever, and it doesn't matter whether you put the fulcrum on the right or the left hand of the diagram, as long as they are in the same orientation with the load in the middle and it's a second class lever, you will get the mark. Again, they're labeled, okay. The fulcrum uh, is the tiptoe, the load resistance is the body weight, and the effort comes to the gastrocnemius at the back of the leg. Here is the diagram I had from the previous video and it explains very accurately what is going on. Okay, so the load, and in future videos particularly available, you will look at the line of gravity coming down from the center of mass that depicts that arrow for an athlete during their physical activity. Okay, the effort is going up from the gastrocnemius force and the fulcrum is the tiptoe joint there. Okay. Once you've drawn this as a student, you must try and go back to the original picture diagram and make sure and double check you think you are correct and you've got it in the right way round. Okay. So even if you need to draw this out and you need the muscles and the bones in order to picture what is really going on, please do so because notice how the muscle, okay, again, like I talked about earlier, the tendon doesn't go through the joint as when you move that up impinge the tendon and cause a lot of pain. It goes around the joint, so the calcaneus of the ankle there. Another practice question. Diagram shows a weightlifter performing an upward phase of the biceps curl. Okay, so again, we're reading the question is upward phase, not the downward, but the upward phase. So biceps are concentrically contracting. Draw the lever system, which operates at the elbow joint, fulcrum, in the space below. Label the fulcrum, effort and load. Again, we've asked you to label. So here we have, it's the same orientation as the picture this time. That was very nice to keep it that way. So we have the fulcrum at the end where the elbow is, effort in the middle, load and resistance at the end. Notice how the effort isn't quite in the middle. A lot of students ask me why isn't the effort basically at the same point of the fulcrum? Well, that's because the actual attachment of the biceps brachy tendon on the radius and ulna isn't through the actual elbow joint like I've just mentioned. Like, for example, the ankle a minute ago, where the gastrocnemial tendon goes not through the joint, but around it at the bottom. Okay, it's the exact same principle here, where biceps, the tendon itself, falls and attaches here. For a lot of people, it, it moves, um, it's different for everyone, so the tendon may go up or down, but the principle is the same. It doesn't go straight onto the fulcrum. When that, imagine if that biceps here were to contract, the arm would want to move in an anti clockwise direction. But because the load is going downwards with gravity, obviously it wants to create a clockwise direction or moment. Okay, we will look at moment arms and a, in a different um, video at a later date particularly for those studying A-level, okay, or undergraduate work. So make sure they're in the correct order. So it is a third class lever, it is a mechanical 
disadvantages of Ziva, so the fault comes at the end, effort is in the middle, and the load resistance is at the end, and that will give you that one mark. Again, we need to double check against the diagram. Okay, that we have answered that as best we can. Again, if you really want to exam, there's plenty of space in the margins of the paper to have a go at drawing this. Okay, again, like I said at the very beginning with one mark questions, use that time. Okay, and apply it to this question so you've got just a little bit longer than a minute to figure out what is going on. I hope you really enjoyed this um, less, uh, lesson online. Okay, please give me a like and a subscribe and there'll be a lot more videos to come out. Um, I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment.